Okay, I'm going to review how to calculate some of the most commonly used diversity metrics in R, and we're going to use this data this data set that you can see here in the screen share. And this is a data set of long-term forest monitoring plots in the campus forest at Evergreen. And so the first column of data is the name of the plot. And then the other information is um, understory um, vegetation that's collected by a specific type of survey method. And so what you're seeing in these columns, um, they're headed by the four letter code names for these um, species of understory plants. And then you have um, abundance estimates for these for each plot. So I'm going to stop sharing that and we're going to go into R. All right. And so the first thing we need to do when we're working with this um, example is to import the data set. And um, you're going to import it from a CSV file, a common delimited um, file. And I'm going to pull it up here. And you're going to view it. And one thing I need to make sure is that it's reading the top row as a header row. Yes. And importing it. Great. And so it's useful before you start these packages that um, it's, it's important that R is reading the data set correctly. For one thing, the first row needs to be identified as a header. And R does not really, the vegan package in R, which is what we're going to use, does not really um, do very much with the first column of, of data, which is usually an indicator of the identifier of each sample. And so first we're going to um, look at structure of our data set to make sure R is reading it correctly, and it is. And so what this is telling us here in the output window below is that we have our different species, um, and it's showing us that the very first piece of information in the data set is what we call a factor data. It's this, this identifier of the plot. And so we want to get rid of that um, before we start working in, um, in the diversity metrics. And so I'm going to create a new data file that is um, the com data, but it's minus the first column. I'm just gonna look at it. And that's how it's okay. And now it's, it's in the correct format. So um, the first thing we want to do now is to install a package that's called vegan. It's a very easy, for R at least, use um, package for community analysis in R. And so if you haven't installed a package before, you simply go in RStudio to this install screen and you type in the package, you type in vegan, and you can see vegan is one of the packages that is available. I have already installed it, so I'm not going to install it right now, but once it's installed, it should show up in the packages window. And you're going to want to make sure you click vegan, okay, and it's actually going to load the package into your program. And so once you do that, you can cut, calculate a, a variety of diversity metrics. Or one of the first things people um, really should do when they have this kind of data set is they want to generate a species accumulation curve. You want to see if, you're, if you've sampled um, exhaustively enough or comprehensively enough to start to see um, a leveling out of that species accumulation curve. And you can do that by hand, but R can do that taking your data and using what they call a resampling method, a reshuffling method of your data points to generate some um, um, estimate of confidence around your accumulation curve. It's very commonly seen data in, in publications. And so to do that, we need to make, um, uh, we're going to name this analysis. Um, how about species, oops, I got one here. Species accum. How about species curve? And then we're going to actually perform the function species accum, which is here in vegan. And then we have to give it some information. It needs to tell you need to tell it what data set you're using, which is the COM data. Um, you need to tell what method you're going to use. And we're going to do a randomization method. And you're going to need to tell it how many times you want the data to be reshuffled. And for this analysis, let's do it a thousand times. You can choose how many times it's going to reshuffle your data set. 
Let's, let's start here for, with a thousand. Enter that, and it looks like it has done the analysis. Now, to plot your species area curve, you simply use the plot function, species curve. And what you'll find over here in this window, I'm going to expand it, is a species accumulation curve. And um, these bars, the hatch marks across it, are estimates of um, confidence around a species accumulation curve. Now, depending on what your window looks like in R, it's important to know that this can look really squished when you first get it out if your window is minimized. And so you can export this as an image and you can set the dimensions of it to, to be what you want. So if I decide to save this as an image and it looks kind of squished, I think, like this, I might want to make the height of that image almost as large as the width, okay? And I'm going to want to view the plot. This, see this check mark box down in the bottom left? after I've saved it. So I'm going to save it and it's going to, I'm going to make sure I'm going to be showing that image here. This is what it's going to look like as a saved image. Okay, so that's a, that's a you see some nice resolution in that axis. Going back to R. Um, Another thing that you will want to do, um, some basic diversity metrics. Okay, so we've plotted a species accumulation curve. We can also um, look at some indexes of, of diversity in our um, data. Probably the most simple, and it's a very commonly reported metric of diversity, is your numbers of species. And that's usually reported as the numbers of species in a sample. And you'll see that reported in, as an average with some estimation of variation around it. Um, that gives you some useful information about the diversity in your um, sample. And so I'm going to start an analysis called species SR for species richness. The code for that is species number. I like to use these drop downs so that I don't mess up with my typing. And then you tell it which data set you're going to perform that on. And then I can view that by just using the typing in SR. And it actually shows me for each plot what my species richness was. And so it basically looked to see which species are occurring in each sample. Okay, it doesn't give us any information about the abundances of those species. It just gives us a count of species. But you can use this and um, you could use this in some kind of analysis of variance or a regression as, as some kind of metric. Each one of these could be a Y variable and you're using some kind of predictors to predict numbers of species. Um, I can actually generate some descriptive statistics quite easily by typing in the function mean and then typing in SR and that's the mean number of species across samples in that data set and then um, standard deviation for that. You're always wanting to provide some estimate of variation around that mean. And so um, the standard deviation in this case is 2.34 or 2.35 if you round up. Another very commonly used metric is a diversity index and there are a number of diversity indices out there. Probably the most commonly reported is the Shannon's index. Um, and um, in a, another video, I've shown the equation for that. Basically, it takes into account the proportional abundance of each species in a sample, and it multiplies that number by the, the log of the proportional abundance. And so you do that for each species in the sample, and you get this index called the Shannon's index. And so I can um, have R do that for me um, with a few simple function uh, codes. And so I'm going to call this one Shannon, this analysis Shannon, and the diversity um, keyword is important here. And you're going to tell it which data set, the COM data set, and you'll tell which index you're going to use. That's Shannon. Okay. And now I'm going to look at my numbers for Shannon. And so you can see for every sample now, we have a Shannon's diversity index. And so this number is taking into account both the numbers of species, because you're adding that index, that calculation up for each species. So the more species you have, the larger number it's going to be. And then it's taking into account what we call evenness. So the relative numbers of these abundances in each sample. 
And so a typical Shannon's index tends to run from about one, although you see a few here that are smaller than one, um, to as large as three. In a lot of the data sets that um, I deal with, uh, numbers from about 0.5 to two or so are pretty common. Um, but you can see Shannon numbers even higher than that. Okay, and so the larger the number, the more diverse and the more even the community is in terms of the relative abundances of individuals. Okay, so I can also do some st descriptive sh statistics on this data set. And so here's our mean value for the Shannon's index. And I can do standard deviation again if I want to look at that. Okay, and so another type of metric that you will see often reported that gives you this sort of idea of your data set is um, what we call diversity estimators. And one that I have discussed before is the Chow's estimator. And what the Chow's estimator does is it, it's an equation that takes into account the rare species in a sample. The number, the, the species that are only occurring in one or two samples of your total data set. And it uses that information to estimate how many species there actually are. Because no matter how exhaustively we sample a community of organisms, we almost never sample every single species that, that's there. And that's because most species in a community are rare and some are extremely rare. And so getting some estimate of how um, many species could potentially be in your community is really useful. And there are a number of estimators. I'm gonna perform um, a function for um, providing some common diversity estimators um, using the species pool function. And so if I um, type in, Maybe I'll say estimator is the name of my analysis. That's the function that we use. And I'm gonna tell it the data set that we're using. And then there's an option for small sample. Do you have a small sample? Almost always the answer is yes. estimator and here is our output I'm gonna maximize the screen a bit so that you can see and so there have been several estimators calculated very quickly so the not total number of species in the sample that you see these the eon plots 48 48 species were detected in these counts um, the Chow's estimator um, estimates that there are 54 this is the estimator using the information on numbers of what we call onesies and twosies, um, types of species that are occurring in one or two samples. And the cool thing about it is that um, the way that they're performing this analysis in R is using a reshuffling method so that you can actually get an estimate of variation around that estimator. And so the, the estimator is 54 with the standard error of 4.8. There are some other estimators listed in here. There's a jackknife one estimator and it's standard error, and it's slightly higher. It's, it's, it's suggesting that there could be as many as almost 60 species in that community um, with a standard error of almost four. And then there's a bootstrap estimator. And these are just different types of reshuffling computations that are used to estimate, and they, they're based on the structure of your data set. And the bootstrap estimator is about 54 species. So the chow and the bootstrap are pretty similar. The standard error around the bootstrap is a bit smaller. So when I report these estimators, I often report several, several of them, and that gives me an idea of the potential range of numbers of species. And what I would do is sort of take my species richness, it's 48, and then I would look at my lowest estimator, which appears to be about 54. And, and then I would say there, could be a range from, and I take your, the, the standard error of that estimator, there's 48 species. It could range from about 50 species at the very lowest estimate all the way up to, I take my highest number and add the standard error to that up to as many as 64 species. That gives you this range of potential species given the data set. And what you'll find is if, you've ex, if you have sampled comprehensively, the estimated numbers of species that in the standard error around it is, is closer to what you actually observed. And if you don't sample 
comprehensively, you can get a very broad, wide variation of, of how many species could be there. And so those are some basic diversity metric, metrics that you can use the vegan package to calculate in R.